Welcome to the chilly North Yorkshire Moors. Now, why am I holding this? Well, it all started with this back in 1950 with the Type 2 T1, the camper van. It became a symbol of peace, freedom, love. It brings back so many memories. Yes, obviously I wasn't around in 1950, but when I was younger, you saw these all over. A couple of my mates even had them. And do you remember the microbus? Well, it's now a reality. Introducing, 73 years later, the Volkswagen ID Buzz. I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. Now this has been on the cards since the 1990s. I remember they started announcing something called the Microbus. So when the hippie campers disappeared, well, there was a gap. And I suppose this is why you see so many of the classic campers being restored. I mean, one of my favorites is the 32 window Samba. That's what they've tried to do now is bring it into the future, but still give it retro looks. Now, the thing is, it has changed a bit since the concept that we saw at Goodwood. It can still look a bit radical, but the bottom line is it has to tick the boxes. So it's got to be versatile. It's got to be practical. It's got to be ready for commutes and things like adventures, which it does in spades and it drives as well as it looks. Now, straight off the bat, it's not built on MQB. So it's not actually a transporter. It's built on MEB. So it's the same platform that you see for ID3, ID4, ID5. So it's a fully electric vehicle. Now it certainly does retain some of its conceptual looks. For example, this big chunky bumper with the vents, LED lights, and on this, we've got the matrix. Now there's two trims. You can get life and style. Life is around 58,000 and this is closer to 62, but it does have all the bells and whistles. ID buzz. And that's what it does. It just buzzes around. It's one of those that you could cruise the Alps one day and then head to the office the next day. Yeah, it is pretty wide. Believe it or not, it's actually the width of a Range Rover. So its dimensions are pretty big. However, it was never small. It was never meant to be small. I mean, yeah, this is a fair bit bigger than say a classic, but that's what happens. I mean, just look at early Golfs. Vehicles have exponentially grown. And to be honest, I don't think it looks bad for it. It also makes it extremely roomy in the cabin. It's such a pleasant experience traveling in it. And that's whether you're driving, passengering, or camping. Yes, there will be a California. Now, VW are going the whole hog with this. Not surprisingly, as I said, it's been on the map since the 1990s. Tech, the regen, it breaks itself. It slows down for corners, collision mitigation, AEB, lane keep assist, blind spot detection. It's not the longest range, but the bottom line is it's a big vehicle. It's heavy. So it's got the 77 kilowatt hour battery that we've seen in various ID vehicles. It's proportion suited down to the ground. Big wheels, chunky mirrors. And just look at the way the windows are laid out. Nice and tall. And these quarter lights. Now this is what you call a big windscreen. It's such a good looking vehicle. It looks futuristic, but retro at the same time. And I suppose that's what appeals to all these people that keep turning their heads and thinking, what's that? Is that the new era of camper? Well, in a word, yes. Design styles like this. But the one thing I'd have to go for is the two-tone. Now, it may be an option of around 2,800 pounds, but I think it's well worth it. Because imagine this with say, tangerine and pearl white. That'd really play back into 1950s, 60s, 70s campers. Let's take a look inside. This is a nice addition. It illuminates the door handle. Yeah, it's not quite as conceptual as the model that we saw at Goodwood. However, it is still pretty minimalist. Hard plastics here. This is all padded and it's the perfect position whilst you're driving. So you don't need to keep your arm up here like many people do in SUVs and cars. So that's nice to see. Extra storage. It's nice and simple to climb into. We've even got a step here and it's rigid plastic so you can grip it quite easily. And yes, we do have a grab handle. Now, as soon as you step in it, you see the familiarity, the little cluster and the big infotainment screen. Lovely leather wrapped steering wheel and it's heated and a familiar drivetrain. Touch activated buttons. If you're not familiar with the ID range, for a start, your shift is here. So you put it into drive by literally twisting. And in this you get the beep and then the fluorescent -y light. So if you turn this, first drive and then again, brake. And brake means it'll put heavier region on. So essentially one pedal driving. 
and then neutral reverse and park at the end. It's all very, very intuitive. If I put it into reverse. Oh, no light, but rather high def cam. As for the design language, I just feel so at home in one of these. It's so refined. Headroom, well, not a problem. Supported, comfortable electric seats. And they've got memory function as well. And this looks like, I think it's massage. Yes, it is. And you get two armrests. As for construction, solid. They always peddled the ID Buzz and the Microbus as this, essentially something from another planet. What it does is turns the concept into practicality, versatility, something that you can use on a daily basis. Once behind the wheel, wow, that elevated position is excellent. You just look at the gap between the windscreen and say the cluster. You've got such great visibility. As you'd expect, we have a plethora of storage. Cup holders. And in true ID style, pause on the brake and play button on the accelerator. Now you will find hard plastics, but it's all good quality. It's also a lot of color. Everything feels really good. I'm a real fan of this. I suppose it's like a minimalist wood finish as well. So as you'd expect, it's made from multiple recyclable materials, like most modern cars, to be honest. No real leather. However, it does feel rather nice, and you've got sporty stitching. Centre console area too. <gasps> you can remove it. That makes me wonder if you can get captain seats, so you can pivot round. I can't think of another reason that you'd be able to pull this out. Ooh. Infotainment screen. Well, it's one that we're very familiar with. So it's responsive, it works well. Yeah, there's no rotaries and you've not got proper buttons, but it's nice and easy to use. It may take a bit of getting used to, but once you're there, it's fine. It's nice to see that the heated seats are here as well, so you just press there. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, DAB Radio, you can set some of the car's settings, and you've got your Smart Climate, your Classic, and your Air Care. If you press charging, it's about 122 miles of range and 63% of battery. Now let's see if we can see a little more. Oh, battery care mode, bi-directional charging as well. Currently we're getting 2.2 mile kilowatt hour and it will economize the more you drive it. Here you can see IQ drive. So this demonstrates what I was talking about before. It detects vehicles, takes into account speed limits. And in case you're wondering where the charging ports are, they're neatly hidden here. You've also got to release the tailgate on this door card. Let's take a look in the rear. Sliding door. That's a decent opening. And yet again, another step. Climbing in, well, should be child's play. You've even got this grab handle here to help you. Ah, this is nice. Lovely and roomy like the front. I can get my feet under the seats. I've even got this pull-up tray. Yeah, okay, it's, it's, it's not really the most well-constructed tray in the world, but it does do the job. I fold it back down is anyone's guess. Close it. Pull up. Smartphone pocket here. It's not just about campers in the North York Moors, it's things like that. The Aston Martin. It's simplicity to close the sliding door from the rear as well. Once again, good construction. Lots of storage points as well. There's even a USB charger in the door pocket. Very clever. Padded area. You could quite easily get three in here. Comfortable supportive seats. And I am a fan of this trim too. This is a little bit upright. So, better resolve that, haven't I? Once reclined, it goes back a fair bit, to be honest. Feet under the seats. Yes. I am surprised that it doesn't have individual seats. A bit like the Zara Picasso. I think they missed a trick with that. Isofix points, airbags around the vehicle, and it's lovely and light and airy. It does help having this really light interior. And the light headliner. And centre lights. And it's quite a reach to actually get to the front. So it does show you how much room you've got in here. It's such an exceptional vehicle. Yeah, it's not going to suit everybody but I think it'd suit Annabelle and I down to the ground. 
the ID Buzz has such a clean design. Just look at the rear. Slimline LED rear lights. And you've got a light bar and a big Volkswagen badge. Chunky big bumper. Now, if you do want a diesel or a hybrid, you could go for the multivan. But to be honest, I think we'd go for this. I also do like this sporty rear spoiler. I do like the touch of attitude. As Ben mentioned, you've got a decent sized battery, 77 kilowatt hour, with a range of around 300 miles, the range that VW claim it to be. However, when you take into account the British weather, we reckon it's likely to be closer to around 260. Now you can home charge, but it will take well over 20 hours for a full charge. A wall box of 7.4 kilowatts will take around 12 hours, and we think that this is the best option with today's energy costs. Although admittedly, that's not the best option for everyone. And you can rapid charge up to a speed of 170 kilowatts. Now that's fast. And that means you can get up to 80% in just 30 minutes. It's a nice sturdy door, it's well insulated, and it has a charging light. You've also got rear parking sensors and the reversing camera. Let's see if we've got a power tailgate. Of course. This is a nice touch. Now that's what you call roomy. I'm sure we could get a row of seats in there. And it does look like that because you've even got, it's almost like a padded armrest here. Like the cabin, there's just no lack of space in here. Also, we've got this interesting concoction here and it looks like it can be removed so you could use the full big floor. Charging cables. But the fact you've got this elevated, it's perfect for say a dog. Lovely carpeting. Aha! It can tow! 12 volt socket. It's interestingly done this, it's like storage points. So it does beckon the thought, I wonder if there will be maybe an option for two extra seats that could go in the back at a later date. Because that would be a clever move. Prepare for its party trick. Now, it's not quite as cool as it could be. You'd expect something like ID buzz in fluorescent lights or neons or some such thing. But you can see where to top up your wiper fluid. So that's something. It's a momentous day. We've got behind the wheel of the ID buzz, courtesy of Andy Harris. And wow, it's as good as it looks. Come on, Mr. Magpie. As for the driving position, elevated, very MPV. And it feels so well grounded, stuck to the road like glue. Ooh. And it is a bit of a beast. That sign looks like something out of Hogwarts. Mm. I think it's left down here then, is it? Do we think? Yes, I would say so. I'm just speechless, to be honest. The fact that I'm behind the wheel, <laughs> I'm going to have to sit and kind of collect my thoughts. I've been wanting to drive this since, well, the microbus has been on the map since, I think it's the 90s. It's a joy to drive. Because it's built on the MEB platform, we've experienced this tech before, ID3, ID4, etc. It's not built on MQB, like the transporters. Now, I'm a real fan of the technology that VWG use. It's got like awareness, so when the vehicles stop in front of you, it starts braking itself. It feels so well balanced. Because it's so damn heavy, it means it's glued to the road, so it corners extremely well. And it's rear-wheel drive, so it puts the power down nicely. But what I have noticed is I hardly need to accelerate, so it conserves its range for England. You can see everything, can't you? You really can, but that's what you want with a touring vehicle like this. Yeah. You want to have great visibility. In that way, it does remind me of the old school ones. Like the Type 2s. The one thing that you notice which is different to that is the fact it's so much roomier in the cabin. It's such a pleasant drive and I'm not compelled to floor it. Even though I will test it up this hill. I can shift. It's weight, it pulls. Yeah. Definitely can shift. No, but uh, this is a cruising vehicle, isn't it? Oh yeah, massively. The seats are so comfortable. You know, the Alps, that kind of thing. 
So yeah, it's an electric vehicle, so it's got a two pedal system, and wow, this is a steep one, isn't it? Yeah, ah, check this out. And I can feel the regen taking advantage of that. Oh, very nice. It almost feels like it's lowered as well. You feel it when you go around corners, it's like <laughs> so sure footed. Yeah, it's not the kind of thing you're going to go throwing into bends. But it will surprise you. Just, I'm in awe. The steering. Such a refined experience. Great feedback. Nice and direct as well. Hills. I just love electric vehicles. They just cruise up them. It's like they're not even there. It's effortless, isn't it? It is. That is... That's a spot on word for it, effortless. <laughs> it's, oh, it's fabulous. It encompasses camper travel. And this is the first iteration as well. So we've got things like California's coming, long wheelbase. Take note, ladies and gentlemen, you've actually seen a rarity pair lost for words. To be honest, I'm transported back into the hippie era, which is rather apt, isn't it? It's tech loaded, it's safety loaded, convenience, things like adaptive cruise control, AEB, collision mitigation, detection systems left, right and centre. Big grin spreads across my face as I go, dee dee dee, on the open road. Now it's the cluster that you'll recognise from various VWG vehicles, things like the Enyaq. So it's not the biggest cluster, but it works perfectly and in harmony with the infotainment that will give you all the gubbins that you need on, say, your economy. The thing is, I've noticed it doesn't tend to use range. Well, not the way I'm driving anyway. How is it as a passenger? Oh, it's so comfortable. And because you've got these really big windows and great visibility, you feel like you're on an adventure rather than just journeying from A to B. Yeah. I do like the way that you've got this big dash as well, so there's a massive expanse before you even get to glass. Oh, it zips off. Look how agile it is, Annabelle. Consider its size. It is, it's nimble. It handles more like an SUV than a van. But bear in mind, it's it's not built on the transporter platform. It's built on a purely electric platform. Look at these hairpins! Ah, yes. Yeah, you feel the regen kick in there as well, so it slows you down on the severity of the bend. So you felt the regen kick in there as well. Because of the severity of the bend, it scrubs off speed. Now, it's rather intelligent, this one. Now you can tell its size when you're on country roads. As I mentioned, it's the width of a Range Rover. Which it means it's not the nimblest thing in the world, but that's not what it's about. It does handle well for what it is. Yes, you will get body roll, but it's more the body rolling on top of the chassis because the chassis is so damn heavy. But that's a good thing. It means it's firm and planted at all times. Great brakes. And as I said, nine times out of ten, you don't need to brake because the vehicle will do it for you. I mean, I could keep driving in corners with ease. And the turning circle, I think it's considerably smaller than the multivan. It's not going to be the greatest vehicle for manoeuvring around town. But as long as you're not on single tracks in the countryside and that kind of thing, everything's pretty much copable. Look at that view, Annabelle! Isn't it just amazing? We're in the middle of nowhere. I'm sure there's a song, something about We're going nowhere Or some such thing We're on the road there we go. to nowhere Something, something He's just bewildered by this Volkswagen coming towards him Just stop here Yes, I was going to say, I think we should pull over here Okay Yeah, that is not a bad turn circle at all, look at it 